the movement to its knees. He became President General in the midst of the Great Depression, which would have challenged any leader. He also faced other impediments, which included the following. The chiefs, who were one of the main benefactors of the ANC, had gradually withdrawn their support. Given these and other challenges, the ANC began to decline considerably. You'll be forgiven for being confused here. President Jacob Zuma was not speaking of himself in the third person. Rather, it was the founding father of the ANC, Pixli Kaisaka Kaseme, he was referring to. Historians describe Kaseme as one of the most controversial presidents of the ANC. Among others, the ANC president general was accused of stealing from his own people. Some might accuse Zuma of the same thing. In 2005, after the corruption conviction of Zuma's former financial advisor, Shabir Sheikh, then-President Tabombeki Samarelli fired him. A corruption indictment followed. Goli has informed former Deputy President Zuma that uh, we have decided to bring criminal charges against his person. Such charges will be constituted by, among others, two counts of corruption. Mr. Zuma will in due course be informed of the date, time and place where he will have to avail himself at court to face these charges. The end of a checkered career, but like a phoenix, Zuma rose from the ashes. He offered to resign as deputy president of the ANC. The NGC of 2005 refused to accept it. In the next two years, the Willy politician demonstrated his mettle showing up support from Pulukwane to the distant hills and valleys of the Eastern Cape. He had now machine-gunned to the forefront of the ANC. A shred intelligence operative, he ram roaded his way to the ultimate power in 2007, brushing aside Mbeki's vain try for a third term. At the time, he had some memorable backers. The manner in which the National Prosecuting Authority has behaved shows that this is part of a political conspiracy aimed initially at preventing Mr. Zuma from becoming president of the ANC and later president of our republic. It's very clear that the country is facing a political crisis, an attack on our judiciary, not by Jacob Zuma, not by Kosatu, not by the ANC not by SACP, an attack by the people who are supposed to be the champions and the, def the defenders of the judicial system themselves. If these people say after 14 days will be arrested for saying will defend Zuma and the ANC, will never apologize. We are prepared to go to jail. We are prepared to be to be tasked by our own government. We are prepared to serve in jail because we said we'll defend the ANC. These were the kingmakers for the chess tactician. Comrade Jacob Zuma, 2,329. Behind this facade of unity brewed a deadly political battle. I warned and at the time I spoke to the two leaders separately and I did say to them, we were starting a process we would never be able to put a stop to. That they were dividing, they were going to divide the African National Congress and that as the moment we came out of Pulugwane, and that process had taken place where we tried to get a third term for our President Tabo and uh, the then President Tabo and Deputy President. We would never be able to control that turning of the tide. It was a negative turning of the tide. I spoke to both of them individually 
and each one of them um, said, Mama, you are saying that because you don't know that man. Bulugwani marked a turning point for Africa's oldest liberation movement. Policies were adopted including removing the scorpion sting. Probably the most controversial was a remedy to what became known as the two centers of power. In the run-up to the 2007 Pulukwane ANC National Conference, a spurious, a spurious argument emerged within the ANC about a non-existent problem of two centers of power, so-called. <laughs> and as a result of this, the Pulukwane Conference took the diametrically opposed position to the Maiken Conference. It now said, instead, that any person elected as president of the ANC would be the ANC candidate for the position of president of the republic. This also meant that the provincial chair of the ANC would be the provincial premier. This unfortunate decision <clears throat> meant that formally the ANC took the decision that occupation of senior positions in the ANC was a guaranteed route of access to state power. The policy meant that Jacob Zuma, who would be facing 18 corruption charges, must become president of the republic should the ANC secure victory in the 2009 elections. And he insists that stepping down as the ANC's presidential candidate is not an option. If I did so, I would be pleading guilty when I'm not guilty. The NEC set up a task team that would look into this quagmire. What I did was, given that responsibility by the NEC, I applied my mind, I applied every moment of my time, like I do with everything I do. Uh, and uh, we looked into the allegations against Comrade Zuma. We explained to the NEC what it is that the allegations were pointing to. And we assisted the ANC to understand Jacob Zuma's case. And I am very proud of the work that I did because I understood, I understood uh, the law better, I understood the cases better, I was able to explain to the ANC. The ANC took a decision on their own in a meeting about what stand we should take. So I was an enabler of unpacking the charges and understanding what they are. I wasn't out there saying, uh, you know, uh, you know, let's, let's go free Zuma from behind the bars. Okay. Uh, no. But before the task team could be set up, there was a pressing issue. Political interference in Zuma's prosecution. The judgment was later overturned by the Supreme Court of Appeal. In an unprecedented move in September 2008, the ANC-NEC under Zuma, Mbeki was recalled from the highest office in the land. The one who sacked became the sacker in a tit-for-tat political move. I announce that I have received a letter from the president which reads as follows. I want to thank the honorable members for allowing me to serve the country in the high office. And I thank you also for your support and candor during the time we worked together. Thank you very much and continue with the good work. We will ensure that the election of a new president takes place as speedily as possible. There is no reason for South Africans to be apprehensive. The transition will be managed with care and precision. We will announce the name of our candidate in Parliament at an appropriate moment. We have a cabinet, we have in cabinet many experienced ministers, including the deputy president of the ANC, Comrade Khalima Montlanti. I'm convinced that if given that responsibility, he would be equal to the task. There was a new sheriff in town, and he never missed a target. The snake was dead, as Jacob Zuma once famously said. 
A seat at the union buildings was certain, apart from the last 18 hurdles, corruption charges that is. And on the eve of the elections, those charges were dropped. In the course of the representations, the defense made certain very serious allegations about alleged manipulation of the NPA and indicated that these were substantiated by recordings of certain telephone conversations which it intended heading, handing into court during the intended application for a permanent stay of prosecution. The NPA decided it would listen to these recordings because it felt that the allegations were serious enough to impact on the NPA's decision if they were true. For nearly a decade, that decision shrouded his presidency. At the 2009 ballot box, the political landscape shifted, and the ANC would compete for votes with former cadres and battalions who broke away under the banner of the Congress of the People following the decision to recall him begging. The ANC's majority have dwindled, but the 65.9% of the ballots secured Jacob Zuma the throne. In the presence of everyone assembled here, and in full realization of the high calling, I assume as President of the Republic of South Africa, I, Jacob Kedlechleki Sazuma, swear that I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa and will obey, observe, uphold and maintain the Constitution and all other law of the Republic. But a loss for the ANC which lost its grip on the Western Cape. It's under Jacob Zuma that the ANC's fortunes would dwindle. But the ANC's membership during its centenary celebrations in 2012 reached over one million. Zuma was also tasked with delivering a lecture on all presidents of the ANC, except for himself, of course. It was during this period that Zuma's political tight-knit weave was unraveling. It is under President Zuma that we have seen the youth of the ANC being traumatized. <laughs> the youth of the ANC being expelled from their own home. It is under President Zuma that we have seen a critical voice of the voiceless being suppressed in the ANC. We have seen under President Zuma democracy being replaced with dictatorship. became more graphic. The ANC closed ranks. Hey, city press, don't buy. Don't buy. Don't buy. City press, don't buy. Don't buy. Don't buy. City press, don't buy. Although friends became foes and ANC members litigated furiously against other ANC members under Zuma's leadership, the 12th elected president of the ANC secured a second term with an overwhelming majority in Mangawung. The mild-mannered man who supported Jacob Zuma and Pulukwane and served as his deputy unsuccessfully contested the position. I'd like to thank the officials, particularly the president, for affording me the privilege to speak after he has spoken. Protocol ordinarily doesn't allow that. Out of this furnace, new alliances were forged. But the last term in ANC office would prove to be the most difficult for Jacob Zuma's presidency. Madiba taught us unity is the rock upon which the ANC was founded. When we emerged from the 52nd National Conference in Pulukwan, we assumed that we're all in agreement 
that we would work for unity and collectively understood the democratic principles and internal democracy that prevailed within the movement. We did not monitor the process. We must not repeat that mistake. <laughs> Unity will not happen automatically. We need to work hard for it. That unity remained elusive. Julius Malema was out, expelled from the ANC only to start the EFF to contest state power. Zuelin Zimavavi was out, expelled from Kosatu, while NUMSA, its biggest affiliate, packed its toolbox. Even from the various kingdoms, like during the Gaseme era in the 1930s, support for the ANC's leader was threatened. Parting ways from government control. We do not want to be controlled by a state that is not credible. So we want the state to put its hands off the kingdom. In 2014, a former ANC activist in the office of the public protector would be brave enough to find the president and his family unduly benefited from the 246 million rand Nganda upgrade. Pay back the money! Pay back the money! Pay back! Nevertheless, the ANC supported the ballot box to Kanok, dropping to 62.15%. The party suffered the worst humiliation during the local polls. Three metros were gone, including Tswane, the seat of government, the economic hub, Johannesburg, and Nelson Mandela Bay, named after the ANC's most popular president. And the Zuma Must Go campaign snowballed. Humiliated our organization and undermined everything that we represent. Stop corruption! Zuma must go! Stop corruption! Right down. I want you all to take a look! A day after thousands of South Africans took to the streets calling on President Zuma to resign, hundreds of South Africans staged a similar protest outside the South African High Commission in London. Many expressed disappointment at President Zuma's apparent neglect to act in the national interest. Protesters also voiced their concern over the recent downgrade of South Africa by ratings agencies SNP. And stalwarts to join the chorus. Me a body of significant comrades and colleagues who have been in this battle and will remain in this battle until we ensure that our victory in 1994 is in fact solidified and protected. Amid the political crisis, unprecedentedly, former foes shared a platform, bemoaning the state of affairs. We face serious challenges approaching a crisis. And uh, Mr. Mbeke? Well, I, I would say that uh, we are actually in a crisis. Because I think 23 years into, into our democracy, with all of the expectations that there were among the people, the reality is that you still have millions of people who are poor, uh, levels of unemployment too high, uh, I mean, when you see the levels of poverty, uh, when you go around the country, urban and rural, it really breaks your heart. Then there's problems of governance. Now you have a, a report, sure it's an interim report, uh, uh, on this issue of state capture. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a real challenge. The calls for Zuma to resign became louder and even echoed by alliance partners who barred the ANC president from speaking at their events. For the first time under President Zuma, Kosatu was not consulted during the latest cabinet reshuffle. We also noted that some members of the ANC top six felt that there was no meaningful consultation by the president. Kosatu, though, has been here before because we need not we were not consulted when the e-tolls were implemented 
when the employment incentive tax was introduced sorry and when the preservation of the provident fund was introduced they have come to a very difficult decision to say the president must step down it's not something that we took lightly it's because we were of the view that part of dealing with some of the problems that we are having he must assist us by stepping down. It's not personal. It's a decision that, in our view, we thought would be a correct one. It caused Bladen Zimande his job as Minister of Higher Education. But this was no ordinary member of the executive being shown the door. It is the man who stood by Zuma, the General Secretary of the Communist Party. And history would repeat itself. As during Semer's tenure, the SACP contested an election in 2017 for the first time post-democracy. The Integrity Committee too had written a letter that President Jacob Zuma must step down. But it was later withdrawn. Meanwhile, pressure mounted in the highest decision-making body between conferences for the president to take the plunge. The full-blown discussion where members of the National Executive Committee, about 30, and uh, opposed to 70 so people, came there and said that the president must actually be withdrawn for the issue of uh, cabinet reshuffle and so on. So that motion was defeated. And that was communicated to structures. Similar motions in Parliament were defeated, eight to be precise. The results of the vote by secret ballot are as follows. The total votes, 384. The yes, 177. But for the first time, at least 25 ANC members of parliament voted for their president to leave. Order, Order honourable members. Among them, Dr. Makosi Koza, who left to start her own political party. It is because of factionalism that we have seen the emergence of splinter groups over the past 10 years which negatively affected our movement, both quantitatively and qualitatively. Slate politics, another manifestation of factionalism, has also cost us many good and capable comrades in whom our movement has invested significantly. Through his trials and tribulations, Jacob Zuma has shown that he's an astute politician, constantly outmaneuvering his critics, at least to the very end inside the party. His preferred candidate may have lost the race, but Jacob Zuma has been clear. This is not the last time we see of him in party structures. No. And I'm happy because I'm at the door of retiring. I'm an outgoing president in all respects. And therefore, my major area of operation is going to be, among others, with the veterans. It's the same veterans he humiliated six months before. But the reason why we have seven days, it is because <clears throat> some comrades who call themselves the stalwarts, the veterans, <clears throat> went around the country organizing other comrades because they had some views and organized those comrades and later reported <clears throat> to headquarters that they've organized comrades at about 101. And these comrades have 
concerns that they want to discuss. But they did not say we want to discuss this with the leadership of the ANC. They said they want a consultative conference. They took a decision on their own, outside the structures of the ANC, and presented that. At first we thought it was very funny that so many comrades could sign a petition uh, in the manner in which they did. Some of them are not as strong as they project themselves. <laughs> we know them. <clears throat> but in chess, when your defenses are breached, it's wise to attack. Zuma is not dubbed the comeback kid for nothing. Nobody knows exactly on which front he will attack, but he will not go gently into that good night. Aldrin Simpia, SABC News.